Yeah, first, uh, congratulations to both our men's and uh, women's <coughs> basketball teams. And Coach Johnny and her staff, and I um, you know they're, they're getting ready to head out, if they, or maybe already head out, and we wish them the best of luck, and obviously celebrate with uh, Bruce and his staff and his team on uh, an SEC championship, which those are uh, hard and very difficult to come by, and um, to see them be able to to pull that off and celebrate with the Auburn family. Uh, Sunday in Nashville was uh, an incredible experience and just thrilled uh, for him. He's, he's a dear friend and um, just really happy for, for them. And, and if I were picking a bracket, I would, I would pick them all the way through. So just pull them for them as, as, and I know our team will be excited to, to watch them from here since they're so far away. But uh, wish them both very, very successful uh, trips to where they're going. We're already in practice seven. Um, today will be practice seven, and uh, really been encouraged by the uh, energy and effort and passion that's been shown by both coaches and, and players. I think the preparation that our coaches have put in to planning the meetings and the walkthroughs and uh, the practices has uh, has been very productive, and I love what I see from from those aspects. Execution's got a, a ways to go, as expected, um, but but really encouraged. And now, hopefully, uh, starting with practice seven today, and then practice uh, nine on Saturday, we'll hopefully start seeing some of the execution clean up. I, I don't know if I've mentioned we're doing a little something different with Thursdays or, or basically OTAs where it's just totally teach, no pads, and really loved last Thursday. Um, just we have so many young kids and um, just the, the us being able to just coach and just teach, teach, teach. And I think those are going to be beneficial Thursdays for us and then be more physical on uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays as we uh, continue through spring practice. Um, um, we're, we're in our teaching lessons. Uh, my, my series is Words from a Father. Um, the, the words that I would uh, love for hopefully our daughters, Jill and I, that, uh, that they've learned. And last week's was decision was the word, and this week is vision. And vision for both our team and for their lives. And trying to share real life stories of probably when I uh, didn't make the best decisions and other coaches share that on, on Thursdays with them. And it's been, been really good to, to share those things. Look forward to teaching on vision today, but excited about getting back out on the grass with them. Uh, we had a great walk through yesterday, great meetings, and excited to hopefully see us clean up some of the, uh, the execution issues, and, which is very difficult because it's, you know, you're, you have a play called and, it's uh, that you're wanting to get in and install and you know standing back there saying this has zero chance of working <laughs> against this this look that's coming and that's because uh, you're not really game planning you're just trying to get things in but uh, love love what I see from our coaches right now and the chemistry and uh, the effort that I see them putting into it and, and our players are giving great effort too so we can build on that. Coach last spring uh you talked about finding an identity offensively. You've got offensive coordinator Derek Dixon here. Players have described him as someone who commands respect and attention when he's out there. So who is Auburn football going to be offensively this, this spring going into fall? Well, when we've been our best, um, and, and he was with me for a while, and, and obviously Kent's been with me, and Ben's been with me, Moe's been with me, and uh, we got a lot of people in that room, and we're, we've got, we're going back to, you know, our terminology that we're all comfortable with, and that we think we can make adjustments. But ideally, when we've been very good, it's been, you know, that 55% run to 45% pass. And if you had, had that ideal uh, percentage, um, I think it means you're pre pretty effective. I mean, some games are skewed a little bit. Um, and if you're running it really, really well, then it may be more 60-40 or, um, but you gotta be able to do both and stay balanced. And I do think that if we can, be consistent in our RPO game, um, that it really opens up us to, um, to be more effective in the passing game because 
you're not always having to drop back protect, uh, which I just don't think that's a great recipe in this league. If you're having to call a bunch of drop back protections, uh, usually that other side is a little more athletic and, and can figure out a way to outnumber you. Um, and so I, that's the key to me to stay in balance is us being able to run the ball and throwing the ball off of run actions where you're not having to vertical pass set a whole lot. So that's hopefully what our identity will be. Coach, you had mentioned in the first week before spring break how the guys were doing a lot of things on and off the field the right way, keeping lockers clean, doing that. After spring break, now that you're back into practice, are you still seeing that trend of guys just doing the small things the right way? And do you expect that to continue with this one? Uh, we're going to demand that it continues one way or another, and it's player-led. And um, I've got a culture council meeting today at 2 uh, before we start meetings, and they'll give me the most recent update of, of how that's going. Um, they have a better pulse on all of those little things probably than I, so I'm anxious to see hear how that's going. Um, from our enrichment team, uh, it's, it's been good thus far, the academic piece, the, uh, the doing the little things, whether it's training table, locker room, all of that has been fairly positive. It's not perfect yet, but uh, uh, we're certainly uh, striving to get it that way, and I look forward to hearing kind of their, their view on it today. Hey, you have a question on your quarterbacks. What have you seen from them so far, both production on the field and also leadership? Uh, leadership has been really good. Uh, it's been inconsistent. Um, we've had a couple of practices where the wind was like yeah. <laughs> tough, tough, tough uh, situations to throw in. But it, um, I think we've got to improve just um, our decision making has not been exactly what I want it to be just yet. But boy, they're, they're they're hungry to learn. Peyton's have been pretty good. Um, the other three are, you know, they're, it's new to a lot of them. They're getting thrown into the fire against a lot of different looks that our defense is presenting. Um, so, but I, I love the way they're approaching it. They, they can't get enough meeting time. They want, they want to learn. They want to, to be effective at it. I think there was in our tempo period the other day, we were really good. Then when we got into the second and long, third and long, we were uh, we, we struggled. Uh, some of that had to do with protection issues too, and um, and us not winning in certain routes, and sometimes our quarterback's eyes were were hanging too long and not going through the progressions as as fast as it needed to go. So we've got some some improvement to do there, but but fairly pleased to this point, uh, really with all four of them. Walker is. Uh, Obviously, swimming, everything's brand new to him, but boy, he shows flashes, uh, as does Hank and Holden, too, at times. But Peyton is, is still the most consistent, probably, and should be. He's had the most reps and, and, and the most understanding of what defenses can do to you. Uh, Hugh, uh, Ken Austin has been with you a while now, been loyal, can't deliver the for an off field thing. How good is it to have him back on the field and coaching quarterbacks? And what does he bring to you? I think he's the best quarterback coach I've ever been around, and um, and just uh, he adds such value to. If I'm sitting in there like this morning and we're discussing something that's going in today, I, I need to hear how he sees it um, from a quarterback's perspective. Uh, when we draw something up or we say, hey, is this something that's a priority for us to, to really get in in spring? You know, how do you view it? And what are all the issues that would be faced in coverages uh, for this? And he's, uh, he's as smart and brilliant as, as any I've, I've been around of saying, this is, uh, this is gonna be the issue. And if we don't have an answer for that, um, then this probably needs to move down the list some. I just have such a comfort level with him because I know that um, when he is teaching in the quarterback room, it is sound. And it's, uh, it's not just about a play, it's about, man, recognizing what's happening long before it happens. And I think he's the best that I've uh, been around doing it. Hey, you, I just wanted to ask you about DJ Derrick, and I know his, his 
intensity and his energy you said has been incredibly high. Have the players on your defense really have kind of understood the message from him? And then kind of the second part, how valuable is it to have a former head coach in that coach's room as a coordinator that you can lean on and ask questions to? Um, I'd love for you to ask our players that. In my opinion, I see them responding to his energy and his the demands he puts on them very, very well. Um, they take his instruction, they take his passion, they take his, when he's correcting them, and um, he's one of the better ones I've seen of handling these uh, Thursday teach, Monday walkthroughs, Wednesday walkthroughs. Man, he has got it organized to a T, and there is a method to every single thing he does, and uh, and, and every bit of it is, is done with great energy and passion. So I think our players feed off of that, and. I think they are. I'd love to hear what they say about it. But And then as far as any time you get to former head coaches like him or Kent around you and um, that, have, that have had to sit in this seat and you talk about practice schedules and you talk about – because I'm open, man. Just because I practice a certain way all the time, it doesn't mean it's the best and I'm open to new things. So, hey, DJ, what, what did, what did y'all do? And, um, and then Nick's comes from – some programs that have had winning seasons too. So what, what's, what's the best practice format that we can come up with to get us where we want to get uh, in spring ball? So it's, it's, it's really valuable to have those kind of guys around you. Yeah. As you mentioned, you've got a lot of guys going through their first spring here. And I, I know you're not even halfway through, but are there any of them that have caught your eye here early on? Well, I love the, the 24 class. Um, I really do. I, I think, uh, man, Amaris flashes, Water flashes, um, Blockton flashes on, on the defensive front. All of those guys, those linebackers, Riddick and, and DJ, and we moved Joe Phillips to Buck now, and, and I think that's more of a natural position for him. So, uh, of those front guys, all of them are kind of flashing at times, and they're throwing them in there some with the ones, and. Not that there are any ones right now. It's just, uh, you know, we're playing, we just kind of rotate those guys around. And I think there's, uh, I think we've got some really good players there that uh, in time are going to be really good in this league. Uh, offensively, Cam Coleman continues to, 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 to show up. And I think Camden Brown and Sam Jackson and Robert Lewis have improved that room <coughs> along with the ones that we have currently. So. Several are, are starting to flash. The, the secondary guys that we signed last year, many of them, whether it's Tyler Scott, we know Ken Lee's, you know, played a lot of ball already for us. But and Colton Hood is is really showing up. Also, Sylvester Smith. Um, so we we're, we're excited about you know those young guys. Okay. Steve, what's what's the next step when you start getting into scrimmage situations? Doing those things. What are you looking for out of your team on both sides of the ball? I know execution's there, but any, anything in particular you'd like to see? Uh, relentless effort on defense, and uh, DJ's demanding that, and boy, he holds them accountable. He charts every one of them, and every loaf, and the way we finish, and the leverage on the ball. It wasn't the right leverage, and you know, we're not tackling to the ground a lot, but man, if, if, if a running back is, is in the open field, the, the leverage, let's don't be lazy on the leverage. Man, use your sideline and keep your pads in the right spot and your head in the right spot, and he's demanding all those things. Love to see them keep getting after the football, and then offensively, man, staying out of negative plays and uh, taking care of the football. Those are the things that if we can stay on schedule, I think we'll be an effective offense. So starting today, we've got a couple good periods of – of some second down competition and, and even some drives today that you'd love to see us stay out of those negative uh, negative plays um, by us recognizing what the defense should do and knowing what the answer is to stay out of the negativity, getting the protection set right um, from our quarterback's perspective. And then our running backs picking up the, the blitzes correctly, our receivers you know, running the, the correct route all of those things keep you out of negative plays. So that's what you, I would hope to see this week us improve on. Okay, you. you said earlier you're going to talk to your kids uh, later today. And one of the things you're going to talk about are some things maybe you weren't stoked about, decisions you made in your life that you weren't stoked mm -hmm. about. Um, I think showing that kind of vulnerability is really cool. We'll talk I'm, about I'm why big I think on that's that. important. Yeah, I, I've just been 
uh, I, I've done that since I've been at Liberty and uh, and just uh, I, I, I try to give real life examples last week's word was, was decisions and ultimately man the quality of our decisions will determine the quality of our life mm -hmm. we can say it however you want but that's just the facts that the, the number of quality decisions you make usually you're, you're gonna like the quality of your life and I'm following that up now with vision and um, if we could ever grasp a great vision of what, man, what do I want my life to really look like 10 years from now? Let's, let's take football out of it first. And what do I want that to look like? What kind of home do I want to live in? Does it involve a wife and kids? Is it, is it family? And, and so what, what do I want that to look like? And then therefore that should be the GPS they didn't know what a GPS was. I had to, I had to tell them, I, I went through the whole deal. Look, when I started recruiting, I used to have the old map. I mean, a, a real map. And you, and you, man, all right, I drive this road, and then I get to this town. And then when you get to the town, guess what you did? You stopped at the convenience store, and you said, hey, where's the high school? Because it's not on the map. I mean, can you get me to the high school? And then you got to the high school, and then you got to get somebody to direct you to the player's house for the home visit. That's how it started. Then we were lucky, and we got the Google uh, that you could print out the, the pages, all right, drive 40 miles on this, take a left, and then we got the Garmin. Oh, that's really when I lost them from the GPS. I said, <laughs> and we thought we had made it when we got to put the, the, the Garmin up on the, on the dash, you know, and it would take you to the place, but when you had that, you put in the destination first, and then it gave you the directions to get there, and that's what I'm trying to get to now. We've talked about decisions. Now, all right, what is the vision? then that should be your GPS for the decisions as you think backwards. I kind of told them a, a, a somber story a little bit about, I don't know how many of you are blessed to have parents still alive, but uh, some in our room still have them, some do not. Um, I'm fortunate to have mine, uh, but they are getting up in age. And when I start thinking about if stats say an average lifespan is 85 or, or whatever that is, and you think about, man, I really have, might only have like five years left with my parents, but truthfully, it's, I probably see them a quality time about five times a year, so that's probably like 25 times. That kind of changes your mindset of, man, I might need to work backwards and make that a priority, and it's the same way now when I share with them about vision this week is, Whatever your vision is, that should be the GPS that governs how you make your decisions to get where you want to go. And um, I'm going to tell them my, my vision of being a, a, an SEC head football coach. And I declared that vision on my honeymoon with my wife, but gave up on it truthfully after 13 years of high school coaching, but she never did. And she would constantly be hounding me about that wasn't your vision. That wasn't your vision, and I'd pretty much given up on it because, man, we've got kids now. I'm making a decent salary. I'm in a good job. I mean, I can't go take a GA job, or a, but she thought differently, and she's really the one that encouraged me to take this off-the-field job um, at Ole Miss way back for Ed Orgeron that, that really uh, kept my vision alive. And So I'll share that with them. And, and, um, Hopefully that will help them find some GPS for their decisions and also for our team. What's the vision? Then we better do the little things right. You know, I think about John Wooden, who may be maybe the most dominant in college sports, the seven national championships that they had in a, in a, in a run there. And, but you ask Bill Walton what the most important thing was, and he said day one he told him how to put socks on. He told him how to lace his shoes. He told him, and if you asked him after he got through what he missed the most, he said, I miss practice. You asked Kobe Bryant what made him so great, he said, I never got bored with the details. And so if you really want the vision to be something, then we better work backwards and those decisions have to match it. Uh, coach, going back to the run pass ratio, you said you'd like to have 55, 45. Um, your quarterbacks have averaged Well, again, I wanted to get it back to what it's been everywhere I've been, and you know, I'd, I'd love to see us at the end of the year have 3,000 yards 
passing or, or more. And you know, it's only been two in full history of the program. Yeah. Well, we can get there. Got to get those receivers right, but uh, we can get there. And you know, if we if we can get to that point, and then obviously the rushing hopefully is well above that. Uh, that ratio would sure be helpful. But you know, we're we're still in the recruiting mode to try to continue to build the roster and. That's going really well for us in 25, I believe, for that class. And um, when you get the roster right for our system, I think it's going to be easier to achieve exactly what you're referring to. You started talking about the basketball team at the beginning. I'm interested because you were in National Sunday and wished them well. Um, I know it's different sports, but from a teaching perspective, is there anything that you can take from this Auburn basketball run, the way they play, the way they play together? I'm anxious to, I called Bruce yesterday, it was his birthday also, and I said, man, when we get time, I want me and you are going on a, a two-night uh, golf trip, and I need to hear, um, because the appearance is that, man, they really enjoyed playing together, accepting their role, whatever it was. In this day and time, you don't see that all the time, and he has done something uh, very right along with, I'm sure, the leadership of the team to get them to that point and to see them enjoying what they do so much. And uh, boy, like Dylan Cardwell, I mean, the guy just enjoys every minute he has on the court. I'm sure he would want more, but man, I mean, every minute that he got, you could just see his, his enjoyment of that. And so Bruce has done something um, right. And I look forward to, we're gonna take a, a, a trip to play golf somewhere together and at night he's gonna share with me his insight to it. Uh, yeah, you mentioned recruiting. How do you think it went for the June day Saturday? And also, um, tell me a little bit about the setup you had up front. It was kind of unique of you. And how do you think that atmosphere had a positive effect on you? Well, we're just trying to present who we are at Auburn and uh, what our culture wants to be. and. Our fit is not for everybody probably, and I tell every one of those that I meet with, you know, ultimately it's your job to decide uh, if we fit with you, and it's our job to decide if you fit with us. And I think that's big. And um, I'm always evaluating during those times, you know, I, whether you're a five-star guy, four-star guy, three-star guy. I've had a lot of three-star guys end up being our best players and best teammates. and. It's really interesting to me to watch in this day and time when you have them here. Um, does that five-star care to go and watch Endo? Or would he rather stay on his phone somewhere? And, and, and all of those things I evaluate, and that, 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 that says something to me, right, wrong, or indifferent. And I'm not saying I'm always right, but, uh, but you're evaluating that because you want the right fit on both sides. And I'm sure they do also, but I thought last week was phenomenal. I thought uh, Bianca and her staff uh, had great ideas um, of like what you referred to with our with our after practice uh, get together, and um, I thought Will and Kenyatta and our personnel team did a great job too of uh, spending quality time getting to know the kids and then give us an evaluation of not just what their film says but what the the time together says. So. I thought uh, the whole week went good. We've got another really good set of players. Well, there's some good ones here today, and then Thursday, and then Saturday will be some more good ones. I don't think it's as many as last week, but uh, nonetheless, some, some good players.